Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kit Plane Enthusiast YouTube channel. I am Mark Pensestadler and in this video series, I am converting my Zenith Cruiser doors from the old fiberglass style to the new style aluminum frame doors. In order to make that conversion, there are some changes that need to be made on the fuselage itself. In this video, I'm gonna start making those changes, which basically requires drilling out a whole bunch of rivets and removing some components because there are new components that go on to replace the old ones. I just wanna mention one other thing before we get started. If you are converting from the old style doors to the new style doors, then part one and part two of this video series is for you. If you are not converting doors, you're just uh, installing the new style doors for the first time, then part one and most of part two won't really pertain to you because th these are the, the videos where I'm uh, making changes to the fuselage uh, that you won't have to make because you won't already have these old parts riveted on. So anyway, part one and two is gonna be the conversion to the fuselage. I think part three will start the actual building of the doors themselves. Now one of the other things you want to remember also is that the back of these four rivets now has fallen down into the bottom of the airplane. I can reach that area through the bottom of the airplane, so make sure you get in there and remove those rivets. You don't want any rivets floating around in the airplane. The next step here is to remove this entire piece right here along the edge, and I also have to remove that L bracket. Now notice how there's only two rivets in here. I always recommend and what I always try to do is I don't rivet anything until the very last minute and it's always because just in case you have to remove it. That's why these pieces up here were never riveted. I just didn't need to rivet them yet so I left them off and I'm glad I did because I would have had to drill out all those rivets and once those rivets are drilled out there's no way to get those, um, the back of the rivets out of this tube. So they would live in that tube forever. So that's in here. I only have two rivets in there and I put those two in because I had Clecos in there, but every time I'd get in and out of the airplane, when I had the seats and interior in, I would kick those Clecos. So I decided to put two rivets just to hold it. And uh, of course now I wish I never put those two rivets in, but at least Drilling out two rivets is a lot easier than drilling out 10 rivets there. So I need to remove that steel bracket and then I am just going to drill out all of these rivets because this entire piece on here gets replaced. So I've got a couple of these rivets drilled out and I'll just work around or work down this line. But I wanted to show you what I do and I think I've showed you guys this before. It might be a good idea if you wanna do it. I just put some masking tape down in the corners and what that does, it keeps the metal shavings from just working their way, you know, in between the corners and things like that. Then I just cover it with a towel so it kind of catches all the shavings but keeps all the shavings out of the airplane. One more to go. It is, 
tough. Well, that wasn't too bad at all. It only took about an hour to remove those parts. I'm gonna show you here the parts that I removed and a couple of them of why you have to remove them. Here are the parts that are removed. And you can see these parts here get replaced. This is the new one and you can see that it's about three quarters of an inch shorter. So that's why these pieces get re replaced. It's kind of a shame too because mine are already painted and have the sticker on them. So I'll have to make new ones and paint them. These are just the door latch brackets. These were another aft door bracket. These things I thought were going to be a really tough deal to get out but um, it wasn't that hard. I just moved the fuel lines kind of out of the way with the screwdriver and I was able to get a, a socket on the back of that to take these off. These are the steel brackets that get removed from the, the cage and you can see a new one here. If you remember the, the old one goes on the back side of the cage kind of towards the cockpit. The new ones here get put on the front part of the cage on the, uh, closer to the firewall. So these new ones are a 90 degree angle and these ones you can see are uh, less than 90 degrees. These are the door seals here on the bottom. All those rivets were drilled out. Those get replaced with this piece here and you can see where there's some notches here. If my camera will focus on that. There's some notches there and there and there and these get bent kind of into the same shape as this and get put on. Now what I'm really worried about is bending these exactly so that all of these holes match these holes. What I may want to do, and I'll decide later, is order these pieces from Zenith without the holes drilled in it. And then I can match drill it to the holes that are on the frame and the, on the cockpit. So the next step I'm going to do before I even start on any of the doors is the easy part and that's getting these new pieces put on the top. Now if you're building this airplane new and you're not converting doors, you won't have any of these holes drilled in here. Uh, and you can see some, but I already have holes drilled in here because I've already built this with the old pieces. This has the new piece with no holes in it. So this goes up into here like this and you have to match these holes. I could probably clamp this here and use a hole finder to put in there and find the holes. Um, but the only thing I don't like about that is that hole finder kind of pushes, when you put it in between there, it kind of pushes this out a little bit and it can make your hole off just a hair. Um, so I think I have a better way to get these holes perfectly matched into here. And I'll show you that next. Okay, here's my idea. Here's the old one, here's the new one. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to take this old one and I'm going to take a pair of shears and cut it in half right down the middle here. Then once I'm done, I'll slice this part off and then all I'll be left with is a little strip up top with these holes on it. Then I'll take that strip, I'll lay it basically right on top like this so the top's perfectly even, I'll get it all lined up. And it'll be easy, I'll just be able to drill right through all those holes on the inside and outside. And basically what's that, what that's doing is it's just transferring the holes from this piece to this piece. They'll be matched up perfectly. I could probably cut it going this way, but I, I want, I'd rather do that on a bandsaw. So I'm just going to kind of give it a rough cut with the shears if I can might be a little harder than I thought. Anyway, I'll struggle with this and then I'll show you when it's done. Here are my two pieces. And if you're wondering why I cut these in a bandsaw instead of just uh, using the shears to cut it, is because anytime you use the shears, it tends to curl the metal. So if I cut these with shears, this would probably be a big bow. Um, but now that it's nice and perfectly straight, I can lay it right on top of the, the new piece here, line up the top edge, I'll probably clamp it in place. 
and then I can just drill those holes right through. I'll do it on the front and back and it'll be matched up perfectly with the old one. If you guys don't have any of these Clico clamps, go buy some. They make two different kinds, or maybe three, I don't know, I have two different kinds here, a shorter one and a longer one. And they work just like regular Clicos. You put them in a Clico pliers and they clamp. And here's why they're so handy. So I just clamp this piece, if I can back up maybe. I clamp this piece onto here with these clamps. All the holes there, I can just go through now with a drill bit and drill them. All right, so the first one I have is done. All the holes are drilled on the front and back, and uh, we'll go see if it fits on the airplane. I showed you guys on the last video how I made these labels for my containers for Clecos. I'll put a link up above on the screen to that video, and if you don't see a link up there right now, it means I couldn't figure out how to do it. But anyway, these are the Clecos, so we'll see if this thing fits on here now. There's one. So far, so good. Well, they all fit on there, and I'm not really surprised. I mean, all I did was trace the holes from the other one or match the holes, so that piece is on, and now I'll, uh, I'll do the other side. Actually, I gotta do, I think there's a, there's a rivet on the inside here I need to do yet too, but we'll get these put on. What you just watched, I filmed yesterday. Today, I finished up most of the tasks that need to be done in order for the fuselage to, to be ready for the new doors. I gotta tell you, it is a lot of work to build an airplane and worry about filming it at the same time because a camera always has to be changed positions uh, based on, on what I'm doing. If you guys wanna help me out and support this channel, I would very much appreciate it. I don't have a Patreon account like a lot of other people have, but hopefully I can do one thing better. If you guys go to aircraftstickers.com and buy a sticker of your airplane, that money will help support this channel because I use that money to buy more equipment uh, that I can use to help make these videos. So once again, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, leave your comments below, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and uh, check back maybe tomorrow for part two.